In this first stage of life, the spider-related arthropods are no larger than one millimeter in size and almost impossible to see with the naked eye. A fully grown spider looks like a true monster in comparison to these larvae. Only in this stage of life are the ticks free from pathogens. They begin to hunt immediately. They crawl over foliage and onto short stalks. Mice are their most important prey. Here, a larva has found its way onto the whisker of a mouse and is looking for a place where the skin is thin enough for it to penetrate with its tiny sucking device. The diminutive parasites usually settle for the areas around the ears and eyes. If the mouse has pathogenic agents in its body, the larva also gets infected and becomes a danger. After two days, the first meal of blood is over. Even when the larvae are full, they are still tiny in comparison to a full-grown insect. It can take months for the tick to evolve to its second stage of life. The larvae then pupate, and eventually the nymph is hatched. It has eight legs now, but is still extremely small and not really recognizable as a tick. And that is what makes it so dangerous. The nymphs begin to hunt for larger hosts, perhaps a polecat, or maybe a human being. Due to the fact that nymphs are so difficult to see, they are responsible for about 80% of all tick transmitted diseases. In the course of evolution, Borreliosis bacteria have adapted themselves perfectly to the way of life of the tick. The bacteria, which normally hide in the connective tissue, seem to know when their host has been bitten by a tick. It is likely that they recognize the traces of saliva. They then enter the bloodstream, travel to the bite wound, and allow themselves to be sucked up. Ticks are the only chance for the Borreliosis bacteria to spread. And when the adult tick is finally hatched from the skin of the nymph, it retains all of the pathogens it has sucked up in its previous two meals. The old shell is left behind.